that was a cold start. I checked the temperature and it says it's Salida, 21 degrees. So I went up there and it started, one glow plug. But man, it sounded like that is not a that is not a sound that I've heard before, or at least it's been a long, long time. That super cold start, oh, it sounded terrible. So I sat up there. You know, it'll do the high idle when it's really cold. It'll kick itself up, and it started to do that. And man, the it just was sounding really odd. I, I'm not gonna say bad, but very odd. So I, as soon as you hit the throttle, it'll kick it out of that high idle. So I did the high idle myself and ran it for a couple minutes at an elevated speed. Um, it, it sounds normal now, but man, sorry, you're probably hearing the fan. Battery compartment is 47 degrees. So I struggled. We were sitting here yesterday, it was about 7 p.m. I checked the temperature in the battery compartment and it was 39 degrees at seven o'clock. The problem yesterday, it never got warm yesterday. So going down to, you know, 25 degrees at night is not a big deal if the previous day it was warm. But when it's only 40 during the day and then it goes down, so the batteries were getting cold immediately. So I, I turned the diesel heater up to get it hotter in here, turned the fan up, and I laid here. It was after nine o'clock and I'm still watching the temperature climb. And finally I got it, I put it on 23 Celsius for the diesel heater with the fan running and it got it up to 51 degrees in the battery compartment. And that's when I finally said, okay, now I can go to sleep. So I turned that fan down a little bit, turned it to 22 Celsius on the diesel heater and fell asleep and woke up this morning and it stayed at 50 degrees out there. So thank goodness, because it is cold. I am not, I don't know. I just don't like the cold weather. It adds a layer of complexity that starting the engine <laughs> it started <laughs> but man so we're gonna pack up and get out of here I I've had enough of this it's supposed to get even colder than this down in the teens coming up so we're getting out of here this morning I saw Jeff already moving around over there as soon as I finish my coffee I'll walk over there and chat with him I want to ride into town uh, I've got to pick something up at the store, and then we turn around, you know, it's a four-mile four, four mile drive into town, pick that up, turn around and come back this way, up and over the mountain, cut, and then it's flatlands down to Santa Fe. So it should be a good driving day uh, once we get out of town here. There's Jeff, right over there. Just a quick walk before we pull out of here this morning. There are some nice sights, like this is a nice sight right up in the trees here. Fire ring. You've got the beautiful mountain views. So this is a nice little secluded one here. When we pulled in the other day, the two spots that I like were, were occupied. Um, they did empty after a couple days, but actually one of them emptied later that day. It was a camper, a car camper in like a Honda Element, and they kept moving from spot to spot, I think, trying to find where they were comfortable. And so we walked up, and the spot that they were in that I wanted 
was now empty and they had moved to a different spot. Oh, I see debris over there. What the heck is that? So Lefty has got his eyes out for the cactuses around here. He's really good at avoiding them. I mean, he will stop and turn. He knows exactly where they are. I don't know if it's vision or smell. What is this? I guess, is this somebody's camp? It's a little tarp, a folding chair, and looks like a folding table. But there is nobody around here. Maybe they went into town. Come on. Come on. So the truck's been running for about, I don't know, 45 minutes. It's building some heat. Sounding, sounding normal again. Man, that was, wow. And I need to put some anti-gel in the fuel tank. So I'm going to ride into town. I've got to get some diesel. I'll see if I can't get some anti-gel. I do add the diesel clean. But it's it's the diesel clean. It's not the anti-gel one. It's the, uh, the gray bottle. Because I normally don't come into these kind of temperatures. So I'm kicking myself in the butt for not have an anti-gel in so I'm gonna go solve that right now I'm going to go around the corner from the gas station to that welcome center and let Lefty stretch his legs. Yeah. This is a really nice welcome center right around the corner here. They have RV dump. They have water fill up, potable water fill up. Uh, and small garbage can so don't go there expecting to dump your garbage you got to fit it through a really small hole in the can but it's a really nice uh, welcome area I actually spent a night there once when we were getting ready to leave town just my schedule made it so that it was more convenient to sleep in the parking lot there they do have uh, some long spots for our for long RVs or trailers there. really nice little place um, great for when you're coming in or heading out of town to, to dump, uh, get some water filled up, that kind of thing. Right here. I'm guessing they must have run the sprinklers. Because... Oh, come on out of there, left. That's got to be cold, buddy. Yeah, they must have had the sprinklers on. That is pretty cool. Look at that. They're like little popsicle sticks. When we're on driving days, I do my best to get Lefty out and walk him as much as I can. You know, he doesn't mind riding in the truck, but the the more walking I can do for him when we stop, the better he feels, I know, and the better I feel. Plus, I like him to be able to check out areas. You know, he's been to this Welcome Center before, and I love taking him to places to revisit things or places that he's seen before. You know, dogs in their nose and their memories. I know they remember this stuff. 
and he gets he gets excited when we're pulling into a place that he has been before you can all hear it he gets really excited when we're pulling in to stop actually any time that the truck starts to slow down especially if I put my blinker on he gets up and he starts making some noises So we're going to be leaving Salida. This little intersection right here, this is actually called Poncha Springs. So we are now heading out of Poncha Springs. We're going south on 285. Now the first thing that we have to do, and I've done this drive before, uh, some years ago. The first thing we've got to do is go up and over uh, a mountain pass. Now it's not you know, it's not a 14,000 foot mountain pass, um, but it is, you know, it is a climb with a lot of uh, twisties. Uh, and I know the first time I did this drive was back before I had that uh, overdrive button fixed on my shifter. So this time I'm able to turn off overdrive and get it to like 50 miles an hour and just held it there. And the truck, it can do these kind of grades, no problem. You know, the turbo gets spinning pretty good. The, the problem when you're doing these kind of climbs is the twisting and the turns. And when you lose your speed, if you've got to go around a sharp turn, especially if you're on an unfamiliar road and you don't know what's around that turn and you drop your speed down, that's always the difficult part, you know, driving a six-ton truck up an incline uh, when you lose your speed the momentum you know then you kind of got to start all over again you've got to get the the engine rpms back up you know drop down gears and and climb back up and get your speed back up but this i was able to hold 50 miles an hour uh, the truck stays in third gear when you've got the overdrive off and just we climbed up this no problem and, and again I've done this before and I can remember the turns pretty much um, so it wasn't so bad but this was you know first thing in the morning I knew we had to climb up and over this but I also knew that on the other side of it was pretty flat land and a nice drive our target today uh, we're heading down to Santa Fe I know of a camp spot in Santa Fe and that's gonna be our overnight for tonight so that's that's the drive we're doing today straight south down to Santa Fe across some pretty uh, desolate looking terrain a lot of abandoned residences what look to be like uh, truck junkyards that kind of stuff and you'll see all that coming up on the drive as we head down into Santa Fe back out into the flatlands here this this route I've driven it before I know this route there's no surprises coming up here so we just kind of made our way along here I pulled over to wait for Jeff because I I didn't know how far behind me he got he actually wasn't very far there were just a few cars in between us so I pulled over here for a couple of minutes and waited on him and then we got back on our way we pulled over again up the road here just to discuss our route. Um, 
because I, I I'm usually in the lead because I have the the map on my screen and a little easier for me to track our progress so we pulled over here and one of you commented about the sand dunes national park and i remembered seeing the signs for it they're actually coming up here when we make this left hand turn um i i put that on my list of places to go we we didn't stop there on this this was more of a we got to find warm weather kind of trip and so we had several day drive here i'm going to show you all in upcoming videos i hope you're here to see it all everybody take care be safe and we'll see you again real soon